Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we are in the final stretch uh, before this blessed month of Ramadan next week. So this is a time where a lot of people are, again, just preparing for the month. Uh, just yesterday, subhanAllah, I had three different sessions all on preparation for the month of Ramadan. So um, with that said, I was asked to speak a little bit about uh, a topic that I love, emotional intelligence, as it relates to Ramadan. So some of you may not know what emotional intelligence is. Um, and what it is is basically in the most simplest terms, it's a framework that helps you to manage your emotions, identify and manage your emotions, and then also help other people manage their emotions. And um, one of the really simple acronyms that you could learn just to kind of stick or to have that uh, definition stick is ARM because A is uh, the, the A stands for awareness so to become really self-aware of yourself and then the R relates to regulating your emotions and then the M um, is for managing emotions of course your own as well as other people so when you become more emotionally intelligent you really work on honing uh, in these skills and um, I came across this framework several years ago, and as soon as I started reading it, it just instantly spoke to me because I found that everything that they were describing was really just applying Islam. If we actually learn our deen and apply it, we will become emotionally intelligent. And so that just, you know, I, I started to delve into it deeper, and the more and more I looked into it, I was convinced that this was a really great modern tool to help to teach people really deen and tarbiyah and, and the prophetic wisdoms of our, uh, of our tradition, alhamdulillah. So um, years later, when I was speaking to uh, Sheikh Hamza, he actually told me about a hadith that uh, really was incredible when, I, when he said it to me, because I, I, I had always thought of this concept of emotional, in, uh, emotional intelligence being something that was modern, right? In 1990, it was discovered. Um, and then we have uh, Daniel Goleman, who's the kind of leading pioneer on the topic. He's the one who really put it on the map, right, that term. Well, that's what I thought until Sheikh Hamza mentioned this hadith where he, uh, he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, رَأْسُ الْأَقْلِ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ التَّوَدُّدُ إِلَى النَّاسِ which is that, um, you know, after, uh, the basis of reasoning after faith is, uh, you know, is, is loving kindness towards people. And subhanAllah, that was amazing because he is connecting intelligence and, again, emotional management, right, of other people. So in fact, uh, which shouldn't surprise us, right, because a lot of these modern ideas that we are um, impressed by, if you actually dig a little deeper, you find that they do have uh, roots in tradition and in religion and subhanAllah, especially when it comes to our faith because it is so, um, it's so deep and it covers so many of these wonderful topics that there's always, you know, you'll always find connections. And just actually yesterday or the day before on, on Instagram, I posted about this very thing that a lot of the modern tools that we use um, in fact, have traditional roots in our faith. So, alhamdulillah, I wanted to now just talk about more about how we can understand emotional intelligence practically and then tie it to Ramadan. So, um, we've, I already gave you the, the definition of it. Now, the qualities that you want to develop to become emotionally intelligent are five. And this is, a, again, according to the works of Daniel Goleman. So, the first is to become self aware, which me I mentioned. The second is self regulation. The third is motivation. The fourth is empathy, and then the fifth is social skills. And if you really look at each one of them, subhanAllah, you'll find that they do actually, um, they are skills that we should absolutely have every day of the year, but certainly in the month of Ramadan, uh, because the month of Ramadan, again, is a time where we really are being put to the test, right? We should see it as that. It's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity to really bring out the best of, of whatever is suppressed within us, because a lot of times during the year, of course, with work and schedules and all of the other routines that we get bogged down by, we uh, that part of us, that true essence of our nature, which is, of course, our soul, gets lost. And so Ramadan is a time for it to emerge and for us to really discover a lot about ourselves and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And emotional intelligence, if you understand it and apply it, it can certainly help you. So, for example, the first quality, right, to become self-aware. What does that mean? Well, um, you know, first and foremost, at a certain point, and you know, I work a lot with youth, and I think it's imperative that parents and educators 
teach youth, uh, you know, all of the, of course, the, the regular education that we want them to have, but also really to help them understand themselves. And so temperament, for example, is something that we, uh, you know, for, for historically always taught, you know, it was very much a part of our tradition to teach about temperament, mizaj, we, we call it in Arabic, which is to know, like, you know, basically what, you know, what is your, um, what's your blueprint? How do you operate? You know, like we, we understand operating systems, right? We have devices. Uh, there's the Apple uh, iOS camp and then there's the Android camp right and we know we understand that these are two different systems and they have different operating systems well human beings are similar right we, we operate in different wavelengths on different levels we certain things um, appeal to some they don't to others so really focus or understanding yourself for example the most simple you know definitions that we all should know are are you an extrovert or an introvert because that actually does really help to understand yourself if you are the type of person that when you're around large settings or, or social settings or there's a lot of stimuli, you feel affected by it and it, it just drains you, you are likely an introverted person. And if you're the opposite, where when you're alone too much, it starts to nag at you and you feel uneasy and you like to be around people, you always have some sounds or something in the background because you don't like silence, then you likely are an extrovert. Just that simple um, understanding of yourself can really help to know what your comfort levels are. For example, you know, Ramadan is a time of community, right? So a lot of people... I mean, now we're in COVID, but uh, outside of that, a lot of times we uh, there is the, the social element, right? Um, and so, some people that's a really attractive thing. Like they can't wait to come to the Tarawih prayers and the iftars and to go house uh, iftar hopping house to house, you know, during the month because they love connecting with their community, and that's beautiful. And for some people, that's what they need because maybe they've been disconnected. Whereas other people, that doesn't sound as appealing because, again, their nature. Um, is that they want to retreat. They actually want to be um, at home more. So if you are only receiving one message, though, like let's say you're reading a book or you're listening to a talk and the message is you should be, you know, congregating and meeting with people and, you know, and reaping the benefits of the, the, the jama'ah, then you may feel lost in that, you know, like what about if I just don't want to, you know, or vice versa. Maybe you're on the opposite extreme where you really are going so inward, which of course is your right, but you don't want to meet with anybody and you don't really want to have any social, uh, you know, connection. Then maybe you need to find that balance, right, which is really what, again, first becoming self-aware um, is 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 learning about yourself and, and understanding that nature. But then the second part of it is, where's the balance? Because both of these extremes wouldn't quite fit. We are social, right? Our deen is a social deen, but we also have the element of, um, certainly, of, of khalwa, of, of spiritual retreat. And so that's why understanding these things about yourself then takes you gradually to the next step, which is I have to regulate these things. Because if I draw a line and say, well, this is just who I am, and I don't want to participate in this X, Y, or Z, and I'm not really realizing that just because something fits for me or feels right for me, is it right, right? That's really the question. Because the perfect example, of course, is the Prophet Sallallahu And his entire life is known to us because so that we can model ourselves after him. And he showed us um, just how he was able to balance. He, of course, had the ability to, or he, he showed us how to retreat, right? I mean, his entire, you know, beginning of his prophecy was all about his need to, to pull away and to just be isolated and, and to really contemplate and to do all that. And then he also showed us the importance of being social and being in the in the community and being active in the community. So his life is a, is a perfect example of how we can find that balance. But this is what, again, being emotionally intelligent does. It kind of forces you to see yourself, right? It forces you to see and understand yourself and then do that compare and contrast with the best of examples of Prophet So you, you really pay attention to all of those nuances about you, those little quirks that you have. And, you know, look, where do I need to filter? What do I need to um, enhance and, and, and work on, on, you know, improving? And then what do I need to change? And so with, when you gradually move from self-awareness to self-regulation, which is the second quality, now it's about how do I do that? And that's where a book like, um, like here, I have Purification of the Heart, right? This is an excellent book for anybody who's in the self-regulation phase, which is I need to learn how to control myself, right? 
And this is also, I mean, it, by extension, it is a bit of self-awareness too, because you have to read these diseases of the heart, which is what the book is about, in order to know what diseases you have. But then they also teach you how to control that, right? How to rid yourself of the diseases. So the, the you know, the we have in our tradition teskia, which is the science of purifi purification, you know, purifi purifying one's soul, one's heart, one's tongue. There's a lot of emphasis on action, right? Where you are aware of what the problems are, and now you have to do the actions that follow. And so that is where you know the second quality of emotional intelligence comes in. And this is a lifelong pursuit. Like when we talk about Tuskegee, it's not something that you just do once and then you're done with. Every single one of us, every single day of our lives have to work on this. And Ramadan is actually a time where we're kind of catapulted, right, uh, in, in, into this work because all of these things start to emerge. You're going to start to see maybe some bad habits come out because, you know, it's it's normal, right? You're cut off from your your normal routines, your your coffee in the morning, uh, whatever, um, you know, cravings you have and, and or sleep is interrupted. So th those, uh, you know, changes can definitely affect our mood and our behavior. And so we're going to start to see maybe some negative qualities qualities within ourselves, right? Maybe we're less patient. We're, we're hangry, as they say. And we, we kind of, you know, in the beginning, need to kind of pay attention, like what's going on here, and realize that all of that is part of that filtration process. It has to come out. Like, let it all come out, and then find your your balance and rhythm because you, you realize that this is, you know, the month to do that and maximize your time in, um, in all of the things that we're taught to do, right? Prayers, ibadah, Dhikr, Quran, all of that is to help us to manage that. So self-regulation, when it, when, and, and again, outside of Ramadan is, is all of these things. In Ramadan, it's specific to really using your time wisely. Like your time is so important in, in this blessed month. And um, if you waste it or squander it doing, doing anything um, of no use, for example, yesterday during this workshop that I had, there was a brother who was, mashallah, very honest, and, and uh, may Allah bless him and reward him because he was vulnerable. And he shared with everybody that one of his struggles is that he actually watches a lot of television during Ramadan. And it's something that he, um, he just, he doesn't like himself doing it. He actually hates that he does it, but he's kind of, I think, habituated to that. And, you know, it's a way to buy time. There's, there's sometimes the days are so drawn out and the hunger can overwhelm you. So we turn to these different mediums to escape. And so he was saying that that's what he does. And he was really sitting with a lot of guilt with that. So I just, you know, I, I wanted to sympathize because, you know, he was isolated from his community. He didn't have a car to be able to do certain things. So there are people who are in circumstances like that, and that's why we have to be compassionate in the way we answer to people. But I just told him that, okay, so if that's something you're struggling with, then maybe the rule that you have for yourself, and this is where, again, he had to regulate, he has to regulate himself, is that you're going to do it better. You know, if you, if you want to watch TV, for example, or social media, then just have a rule that says I'm not going to indulge in things that I know are absolutely wasteful and harmful um, or completely haram, but maybe educational, maybe beneficial. And there are options for us. So, you know, kind of put, imposing that uh, rule upon yourself that in this month, the time is so precious that even if I have these, you know, weaknesses that, uh, you know, I'm going to try to um, somehow you know, work around them and make sure that I am not, uh, again, harming myself or squandering this the time of this month. So that's, you know, self-regulation. And then we have, you know, the third quality, which is motivation. Um, and there's so much to say about each of these. By the way, I'm, you know, just because our comments are brief here, I, I can't get into all of them. But there's, I've done several talks on this before. But just in the context of Ramadan, you know, to be motivated, I love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, kind of uh, has has made the reward of of Ramadan mysterious to us. Like we really have no idea just what uh, the rewards are. And he even in in one verse says that the fast is best for you if only you knew. And I love just even the phrasing of that because it's really you know helping us to understand that there are things that we. There's a lot of things that we don't know, right? But when it comes to the reward of our fast and the sacrifice of, of the fast that we're doing and all of the other things that we do, our charity, our prayers, our du'as, in this month, 
they are secrets only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, I think, serves as a great motivator in that all of the things that we second guess about ourselves, that we feel a lot of self-doubt about and you know, guilt over our past, is that this is a reset. This is the ultimate reset. And that's why when we have the gift of witnessing Ramadan, we really have to look at it as like, a, you know, this is a... Um, a um, you know an extension right it's 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 an opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to reach back and, and 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 to get closer to him but he's extending the opportunity to us it's a gift it's a windfall right because it's time it's 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 so it's it's so much uh, there's so much barakah, like I said, that we can't really um, know. But to have that as a motivating factor, and then of course, you know, to look at the, um, I mean, to, when you're reading all of the beautiful commentary on just the rewards of the month and the different times, for example, when you're breaking your fast, when you're waking up for the hajjah, then you're praying at those times, those beautiful uh, times of, uh, again, intimacy with, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then all of the other wor deeds that we're doing, just that there's this, Again, this, um, this, you know, this, uh, this mystery to it, but it's it's for for us to incentive to be incentivized to do those things, and so just to find those, um, you know, uh, to, to to pursue those deeds, and also to increase our um, our reading of the Book of Allah Subhanahu. This is probably, I mean, it is. It's a, we all know that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It's it's the month that we are supposed to really connect with the Book of Allah Subhanahu. So that's also another really important part of being motivated is that you know finding goals that connect you to uh, the the Quran, and so. If you can read the Quran, alhamdulillah, then a good motivating um, thing to do, just to keep yourself going. And if you're part of the masjid, even coming to Taraweh and praying those prayers and doing a khatam of the Quran should be something that gets you up every day. Like I, it's another day to, you know, again, uh, finish my juz, whether I'm reading it myself or I'm co coming to the Taraweh and I'm listening to it or I'm listening to it at home. There are a multitude of ways that we can really have that connection. But having these goals, right, this sense of accomplishment is also one, a way that we can feel motivated. So that's the third quality. Then the fourth quality has to do with empathy. And I love this, um, you know, because I remember when I was younger and we learned about uh, Ramadan, that always stuck with me, even as a student, in, in a, a Muslim student in a class in seventh, eighth grade, when the, uh, you know, the, um, the chapters or the, oh, in, in class when we would start talking about Islam and, and this, topic of Ramadan would come up that was always framed uh, as you know Muslims fast in Ramadan as obviously an act of worship but also uh, to sympathize right with other people who are uh, hungry and who are you know in these impoverished states so it was always framed as an action that Muslims do to bring about this concept of empathy and I, I really appreciated that growing up and um, and even now I think we all know that that's one of the central reasons why we uh, we fast just with you know withholding all of these indulgences that we partake in every single day of the year for a month uh, and not even the entire month by the way it's just during daylight hours right because sometimes we we forget that um, you know once the sun sets people do tend to kind of default sometimes into those habits but just those daylight hours with restricting yourself withholding yourself um, so that you can feel the pangs of hunger so that you can really realize that there are you know, millions, um, if not billions of people in the world who are in that circumstance, but it's not a choice for them. It's not something to do as an option. This is their daily reality, and they don't really have, uh, you know, a, a huge uh, iftar or, or a suhoor waiting for them at different intervals, you know, during their day or week or month. They, they just basically survive on what they have. So empathizing uh, with people uh, for, you know, during the fast and also the charity, right? We know that the Prophet ﷺ was most charitable during the month of Ramadan. And that's also something we should do. So this is the time to really think about all the different organizations or even individuals that you may know that are in need. And to, you know, to just put aside all of the things that, trivial things that sometimes we, um, again, we, uh, we give into it because, you know, buying consumption is enough, right? If you're constantly just 
you know, on um, these, now we can shop online, so everything is so easy and convenient, but we do it almost, you know, automatically. We're not even thinking sometimes, oh, I like this, let me go click and buy and click and buy. And we do that so much, um, and sometimes half of the stuff remains in boxes and we don't even use it, because it's something that, again, it's a modern uh, phenomenon for, for those who are privileged to have that. But it's a time to stop that, right, and to not indulge in that, you know, um, that, that habit and to rather uh, do that for other things, right? Other causes like donations, uh, you know, launch good, whatever campaigns that you see that you want to support, but really amping up your charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's, you know, empathy. And there's, again, so much, so much more we can say about all of these qualities. Um, but <clears throat> the last one, uh, the last quality of emotional intelligence is social skills. And that's the other incredible thing is that, again, when you uh, look at the month of Ramadan, we really do have an opportunity to, um, to maximize our uh, growth in all of these five qualities. Because social skills is something that, um, as I mentioned before, we are a deen that, that is a deen of jama. We, uh, we do, uh, you know, encourage being social, um, obviously, to everybody's, you know, ability. But we come together for prayer. We come together for to break our fast. We should, anyway. We, we do a lot of things together. We're fasting together. So the idea of developing those social skills is really important as well. I know during COVID, for example, it's been researched as well that the mask served as a barrier for a lot of people, and it's been a little awkward, right, coming out of that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, that uh, state of just not really having very limited contact with people, not really talking much, to suddenly being back into your community. It, it's hard for some people, especially if their temperament um, is is more introverted. But we do have to remember that, you know, the Prophet I said I'm in the most difficult times was always accessible and he was always smiling. It was, you know, so many descriptions of him always describe him as having the most cheerful disposition, welcoming, warm, um, giving the salams we know, of course, it's sunnah, replying is, is fard. Um, just knowing these basic rules about, you know, when you're with in gatherings, for example, you know, if you're in a pair, you don't talk uh, secretly or in a language that uh, the, a third person or other people wouldn't know around you. You don't want to exclude people. So anything that um, that you know reminds us to not be uh, to, to to be responsible when we're in social settings is really important. And everybody has to again look at where the area that they need to work on. But it's something um, that is easily uh, managed if you're just again reading the sunnah and really internalizing his way and starting to adopt this attitude that everything that I do that is in conflict with the way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not good enough. And I need to undo that and adopt his way because this is how, you know, I mean, it's just a fact that if you want to be a better human being, then the only path to do that is to follow his way. And so really accepting that and, um, and working on that in the month of Ramadan in all of these areas, right? Um, so alhamdulillah, there's, again, so much to say about emotional intelligence. I, I definitely encourage um, all of us to know about this framework, to understand it. And if you have young children, even as young as preteens or adolescents, I teach these classes to that demographic for a reason because it's a tool. This is a skill set. And the earlier they can learn it and develop it, the better it will be for them in every area of their life. Because again, it helps them to really appreciate the value of our deen and the Prophet's example. Because all of these beautiful wisdoms were, were given to us centuries ago um, by way of his teachings. And so Alhamdulillah, um, you know, I, I encourage everyone to look into this. I encourage everyone to, inshallah, really work on managing themselves um, and in this month because this is really what uh, Ramadan is about. And uh, on that note, I wanted to actually share, for those of you who may have this, uh, the book Purification of the Heart, one of the um, appendices in the, in the, in the, in the, at the end of the book is actually entirely on Ramadan. And it's uh, it's an excellent. There's an excellent section here that um, I really think everybody should read. It's it's a, a few pages, but there's a part here that I wanted to just um, read for all of you, inshallah. So, <clears throat> Bismillah. The lure to, to lure the believer into doubt is Satan's game. To protect oneself from this is a personal responsibility. 
we are explicitly told that Satan's guile is weak and that he has no authority except over those who choose to make themselves vulnerable and who are deluded. So to shield against Satan's whisperings, one must guard one's creed and sound belief and shun shady devices. This entails confirming one's worship with the sunnah or established practice of the Prophet ﷺ. It requires deepening one's knowledge in Islam and its various sciences. If Satan sees that he cannot assail one in matters of creed and belief, he then comes through the door of shahawat, lust and desire. Our desires are integral parts of normal creation and function, but when they evolve into masters that we consciously or unconsciously serve, this is a problem that can become severe enough to drag us outside the fold of guidance. For Satan, this door can be lucrative, especially with consumers of media who receive a steady stream of messages that make licentiousness and excessiveness appear normal. The Prophet ﷺ told his companions to be wary of Satan and his designs, for he flows in man's veins. Just as alcohol flows in the blood, delivering its debilitating effects to the brain, liver, and other organs, so too do Satan's machinations and enticements. The Prophet ﷺ said that fasting is half of patience, and patience is a quality indispensable for a successful life and afterlife. Satan traffics impatience and despair, while fasting exposes the folly of both. The scholars of spiritual purification advise this, be patient with regard to food, which is the primary urge, and with regard to sex, which is the secondary urge. Conquer these two, the rest becomes easy. There is another hadith stating that patience is half of iman, so fasting is a quarter of iman. There is yet another hadith stating that God, the exalted, multiplies the reward for a good action ten to seven hundred times, except for fasting. Fasting is my own, and I shall reward it, which indicates the enormity of the reward for proper fasting. God says, those who are patient shall be rewarded without measure, in chapter 39, verse 10. Fasting and patience are deeply rooted. Patience, too, is an important key to the opening of favors from God. Alhamdulillah. And there's so much more in this amazing chapter on Ramadan, so I advise everyone who has the book Purification of the Heart by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf to please read that section as a good review in preparation for this month. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in, enable all of us and gift all of us and bless all of us with the ability to witness the coming of this blessed month of Ramadan, inshallah. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best Ramadan of our lives. May he accept our fast, our prayers, our du'as, our charity, our dhikr, our recitation of the Qur'an. May he fortify our hearts and our faith. May he give us conviction in our faith. And may, we, may he guide our children and give them strength in, in their identity as Muslims. And inshallah, bring Sakina and blessing to our homes. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.